Hello and welcome back to Victoria 3, our Ireland run. Last episode we gained independence. We now are the sovereign country of Ireland. We have our own market. We are no longer beholden to the British, who are now the British Republic rather than the British Empire. So I think um, part of going to war with us, they had their own revolution. We jumped in at a good time. So they're now uh, more of a, I think they're leading communist is what their uh, politics are like. And our next play is probably going to be to take the Scottish Lowlands. I think that's where I want to go next. Our economy is strong enough to support it. So we're going to keep building out our industry, of course, um, but also strengthen our military, take care of some of these input goods shortages. I know I need some electricity, some sugar, uh, build up our military. For allies, we have really good relationships with France and Italy. And really, to be successful against the Brits, we'll need one of them, at least, to jump on our side. Now, New Brunswick, which is uh, essentially Canada, is probably the strongest country still on England's side. Um, but so far, we haven't been too successful in helping the Americans take on uh, Canada. Um, we don't have good enough relations, not enough there to really start an alliance with the U.S., um, but we see Ontario is now independent. We've got a Russian port uh, in Quebec. So uh, just a couple things there that are weakening New Brunswick. Let's go ahead and start strengthening the military. Um, wow, we have no peasants left in Leinster. I wonder what happened there. Um, but we've got plenty of peasants elsewhere, especially on the home islands. Um, what happened to all my people? Where did they go? I'm very curious about this one because I thought we had a insane number of people here. Migration looks good. We have no peasants. How about our... So we have a ton of mines. That's employing a lot of people. And yeah, food industries is up to 36 and paper mills are up to 26. We look at how many people that's employing. 119,000 people. So here we could actually go to some of the uh, automation production methods if we want to. Um, but coal is still expensive for us. So I don't think that's going to be profitable. Let's check in our resources. Make sure we're not missing out on any opportunities to uh, get coal. Rubber plantations, of course, are going to be very profitable as we get deeper into the game. And uh, fishing wharves, just an easy, easy one to take care of there. Gold mines, we've got all built that we can. And let's just expand some lead mines as well, because we're going to need, as we expand our military, um, more munitions and arms which use lead. Look at that, our construction backlog is pretty serious. There we go, we've got more migration coming to Leinster. And um, a few unemployed, I see now that's starting to build up, but they're, it looks like they're all getting employed as they're migrating in. So no, no worries there with employment. We have plenty of jobs. So we got self-propelled tor torpedoes. I'm going to update our um, Navy in just a minute here. Yeah, so torpedo boats. It'll take some money. And let's actually lower... Wow, our taxes are so low already. Um, I don't know if I want to lower those. Might be worth it to raise some wages um, for our government. We get some more authority and approval. And then we get morale recovery, approval, and army power projection with higher wages for the army. Um, so we can do that, build up our gold reserves a bit while we have our uh, surplus this high. And while we're at it, might as well build some more construction sectors. Let's see who has the most here. And build some in Vanuatu. I wish on this screen it showed unemployed as easily as it shows um, your peasants. Because that would make it just a little easier to see where you're going to put buildings like 
especially like the construction sector where it doesn't matter where they go. And I'm going to shuffle those to the front. Because I want those to be in place and helping build the rest of our buildings. I always take it easy on these. Um, huh. These look exactly the same, don't they? Oh, well. Um, I don't like the one that risks running, burning through the resources um, just because it's not worth it in the long run, I don't think. But I, I'll take the lower migration because we usually have enough people there that it's not too much of a concern. My uh, colonization there is going really slowly. Um, but Vanuatu is going a little quicker. Nothing too interesting here. Um... We actually have enough coffee now that coffee is cheap. And where else have we colonized? Bougainville. Not enough uh, people there to really make it worth expanding more. How about Micronesia? Yeah, it could, could do with some logging. Um, the South Island is going to be important for us, mostly because of the gold. The gold fields are huge. Um, and it has wheat, which when you're uh, Northern European like we are, you don't get much access to wheat farms, and that's where you get vineyards. Uh, and wine is a very expensive good for us. So if we can get a little more going on our wine economy, um, that'll be helpful, profitable, start to bring those costs down. So we are starting to burn through some of our construction queue. Let's see where we can put some more barracks. Holster, of course. Um, some of these outlying ones, it's not bad to throw a few barracks there. Even if you're not going to raise an army from it, um, it'll at least contribute to the um, defense of that area with your um, like garrison troops if it gets invaded. So that's how I like to look at that one. Input good shortages, still electricity and silk. Not much we can do at silk. I don't think we have the technology to build that in a synthetics factory yet. But yeah, let's let's really go uh, expand our electricity in uh, these three states where we have uh, electric already, just to make the most use out of the um, the throughput bonuses from stacking those together. And now we're back up to a very strong construction queue with thirty six buildings on the way how's our army doing so our north sea hq we can promote a general there just get all those in one army um yeah let's let's do that let's just promote our north sea guy Eamon fitzgerald the hero of the revolution there we go vanuatu's colonized it's now a proper state let's see where else can we colonize anywhere interesting Uh, I think Russia's already colonizing the Solomon, so I'm not too worried about it. Just throw a few other colonies out there. A good vintage. Hmm. I'll take the output rather than the export. And our investment pool is so big right now, I can't really burn through it. I'm not sure how we got our economy that strong. And our population is ridiculous. Twenty, Almost 20 million people. So let's keep building up this construction sector. I mean, there's there's no reason not to. We can't spend it with our uh, construction uh, investment pool, how it is. There we go. It's a little bit negative, but I imagine we'll just keep growing and grow right through that. So who's got low market access? Our economy is expanding so quickly. We're kind of outpacing our uh, infrastructure a little bit. So let's just keep expanding these ports. And I think railways too. Make sure we're not falling behind. Ulster, only 77%. Really need more there. Let's expand that naval base. We're going to need a navy at some point. Leinster. 
Leinster's light on people, but they'll get they'll get over it. We've got a lot of immigration going there. Patagonia's light on people. So let's upgrade this to a cargo port. Um, we'll need more machinists, but we'll they'll be able to take care of that. Maybe build a university here just to make sure we're able to promote those pops as needed. Ubunagi Shari. This is going to be an important colony for us because of the coal. So let's get a railway going. I want to see that colony grow more. It has some good agricultural products that we don't have elsewhere also. And then in Connaught. We've got a naval base, some more ports. Make sure these are set to auto expand. I think our resources are all already maxed out there. Electric fences, electricity is too expensive for that to be worth it. But after I finish all of these power plants, maybe they won't be. So let's look at this again. How would, how would the diplomatic situation look? Russia, France, Prussia, U.S. Those are the countries that we need to be able to sway. So all of them are already on good terms with us. Um, there we go. Automatic irrigation for all of our uh, plantation style buildings. So with that, we can start to... How are we on the worst one for furniture manufacturers? I don't know how I missed that. Um, should help our out output here. Coffee plantations. We get more um, machinists and farmers who are higher level employees. A little more output. So we should get ideally more wages um, on top of more uh, output. Logging camps. I want to go to electric sawmills. But that's just too expensive right now. We're going to need engines. Um, I see that being an expensive good for us. So where do we have those factories? Maybe I'll make sure that one's auto-expanding in Ulster. Where is it? There we go. Let's auto-expand that. Auto-expand our tooling. Auto-expand our arms. Tooling's going to need to be expanded, too. So, let's see how the army looks after that last round of expansion. We can recruit more there. I'm going to recruit a general in Oceania, um, just so I have them available. North Sea, let's promote him again. Uh, just so all of our our main units there are in one army. And then let's let's start mixing it up with the Brits. Um we'll make sure that Austria is on our side as well, but being that they're radical Austria, I think we might have a little more risk of them uh joining the Brits. We'll we'll see. So they don't have a lot of troops on this frontier. I'm curious to see how that changes, how their army actually looks. And I'm wondering if my army is actually behind in tech. Because I haven't upgraded to trench infantry. It is only 1883. Um, but that that's a risk we've got. And I have not upgraded my... Uh, medical part of my army just because it's basically impossible to get um, opium. And you can't import electricity. I think it's the only good where you can't do that. So with that being the case, we've got to make sure that uh, our power plants are all are all up to it. Let's set this to auto expand. We just expanded that a lot, so hopefully we should see more electricity coming through as that plant hires and expands.
I know that's actually an input goods shortage. All right, there we go. I got distracted. I missed this. Forgot to sway some countries. France and the U.S. Let's go for France first. Um, let's aim for a regime change with the Brits. See how the French respond to that. And then afterward, we will target the Americans. Hopefully. All right, so France is on our side. Let's see if we can get the Americans. We'll just offer them an obligation. And let's mobilize our main general here. Get some conscripts going. Let's see how this front looks. They've got 40 troops coming to it. So we've got the U.S. on our side as well, which is good because we we lack the navy power that our enemies have. All right, we got expanding power plants, and let's increase that throughput, make it cheap. Our steel mills are not very profitable, so let's see where there's more iron we can expand here. Not a lot, honestly. Um, maybe import a little bit. Where is iron? Yeah, not a lot on the market either. Looks like it's fairly expensive worldwide. So we'll see this slowly tick up as some of our conscripts start to join. What am I lacking here? Silk. I wonder if I can import silk from anyone. Yeah, we actually do have some good options for silk. So we'll bring that in. I know tools are expensive as well. There we go. War with the Brits. Let's mobilize the rest of my generals. All right, Tonga is now colonized. And anyone we can incorporate. Yeah, actually. All right, now we have capacitors as well. So I don't remember what brine electrolysis does. More explosives, okay. Let's slow this down. We got a lot going on. First, let's look at this front. We're winning. Don't need to worry about that at the moment. Um... Military wouldn't be bad to get our trench infantry ready. So we'll start researching that one. Um, what's next? Isolated state regions. Forgot to build uh, ports here. And let's just get some banana plantations going as well. Just because I know they'll be useful. Some economy for that state. Uh, let's look at the production methods, because we do have the opportunity for these to go up to electric sewing. Um, but electricity's pretty expensive, and we run short on dye. How about our chemical plants? This one? Um, again, more electricity is going to be the challenge there. And more explosives. But let's try it. Um, shipyards are a mixture. Arms Industries, Tools and Steel, those are holding us back. And I think Rural, we could go do Electric Sawmills. Where is that one? And how did this get set back too? Curious. Where am I looking for that one? There we go. Electric Sawmills, yeah, let's go for it. Yeah. So how does this look? All right, we are winning this battle. We're pushing them back. They actually outnumbered us at the start, but our um, forces were much better off. All right, so split into two fronts. I will send um, my two other generals to this front just to hold it. There we go. Now it merged into one front, I guess. And how did we end up 
at such a numbers disadvantage. I'm curious about that. That's one thing I really want to know with the... I know there's a lot of talk about the war system and a lot of people aren't happy with it. But I outnumber them overall on this front. And I don't know how I got into a battle with... Uh, outnumbered like 5 to 1. You're running really low on tools, or on steel. So let's start by just expanding our one steel plant that we have. And make sure that's set to auto expand. Yep, that's set to auto expand. How are these battles going? There we go, we're advancing. We're gonna push them back. This war is getting expensive for us, but um, we actually have some gold reserves. So I think we can hold out for quite a while. And hopefully we'll be able to hold out just longer than the Brits. That's all that matters. And where are all these troops coming from? They get a lot of small allied units joining this front too. Alright, so they attacked us. Um and lost, which is good, because that'll wear down their units, bring down their uh, morale, while we stay pretty high from not taking much damage defending. So there we go. We won that battle. And now we're already back on the offensive. Their rating is slightly better than ours, but I think these events... Um, maybe some dice rolls just threw things just enough in our favor. So I think we're going to control most of this province pretty soon. Let's make sure we get this peace deal set. And they're at negative 150. I think we will get there pretty soon. They're already fairly deep in loans they've got some turmoil um looks like they have decent war support but that should start to disappear once we have uh taken a little more territory from them so we're losing to baroda looks like that's an indian colony yeah let's take this easy any other fronts in this war British and French are fighting in Africa. Um, that might be a little generous way of putting it. What else can we build? More coal mines, for sure. Dye. Dye is expensive for us. Let's make sure we can uh, build that wherever we have the opportunity. And then I think steel is another one that we really need tools i would concentrate in ulster um but we don't have people there right now coalition coupons yeah let's let's do it All right, so we've got a floating harbor, uh, increased our maximum dock level, and we have some American generals joining us in Scotland now. Which will be good if we end up splitting this front in half. It'll be good to have the extra armies to be able to, to go, uh, one go south, one go north. All right, so we got a lot of Swedish people migrating. Interesting migrations we're seeing here. Um, let's, let's keep it up with these power plants. I don't see a situation where we don't need power plants. Same with, like, clothing. Um, shipyards, a little more debatable. Paper. Our government administration is going to need those, so we'll always need those goods. 
wish I had a little more iron available right now. Um, because I know that's a real limiter on our economy. This battle is not going well. Again, is this another British Raj? Yep. So we could actually throw more troops at it if we started to... Let's see. Let's... I don't want to do that. I think the trade units are maybe not the best interest group for us to go with. Um, I think we're going to try to go free trade. All right, so we're taking some hits on our um, market access because uh, they're raiding our navy. And I haven't even put together a navy, so that's definitely my fault. Um, let's see. Let's patrol the coast off of this and maybe see if that uh, takes care of those raiders. I guess I could have done the escort convoy mission. That would have made more sense. So now they're only minus 51 in their support for that peace deal. We'll catch up. So with the trade policy, I really want free trade. Um, because that gives us more trade route volume, less bureaucracy costs, more competitiveness. And that'll really help um, with our exports. Let's see, anything else? We need more taxation capacity in Munster. There's vulcanization. Um... Yeah, so we can actually do bicycle messengers, but I'm not going to change that in the middle of a war. This one needed government administration. That's why I was here. Because we did not have enough taxation capacity. A lot of our industries are suffering right now. I think it's part of the losing market access due to the war with our convoys getting sunk. I think that's a lot of what's doing it. But we are wearing the Brits down. They're down to 39. Um, they want to humiliate the U.S. They want us to pay war reps. We want to conquer the lowlands and push for regime change. So I'll see what the Americans put in place when they get that. I think we'll probably lose a province here. And as I see these other colonies going up, just want to check. Make sure there's not anything I can incorporate that I'm missing. Oh, I want to get that tax revenue. Trade agreement from Austria. They're a nice, powerful friend to have, so let's do it. And again, we're, we're just massively outnumbered. I don't get it. And we have some bad visibility here, which is hurting us. What are my journal entries here? Freedom of trade is the big one. I think that um, can, be, can be an interesting one for us. I'd like to do the skyscraper one. Um, I just need to get my bureaucracy up after the war. See, down to 32. Their dead and wounded didn't look too bad, but then you look at their allies, and that's where all the casualties are. Tens of thousands. Uh, 40,000 for Baroda. And, and that's what we're competing against, where we are really taking the brunt of it. And I'm wondering if I should stop the offensive and sit on defense for a little bit. Let them wear out their armies on me. I think that's what I'm going to do after this battle ends.
And just looking at what else I can build, what other um, places are even, you know, full here. Like, why is this one coal? I need coal. Seems like there's always a shortage of coal, but we'll get a bunch more from Europe. I think once we sort that out, it should really help. I wonder if that's what's slowing down much of our economy here. Anything I can export? Exporting coal. Definitely not what I want to be doing right now. Export some fabric to the Austrians just to get that taken care of. I wonder what's running down my bureaucracy. Oh, it could be the new incorporated states. That could be one. So we'll just build a couple of uh, government administration buildings where we have the population to do it. Because um, it doesn't matter too much where they are, really. You get a little extra bureaucracy, but it's not a huge deal. So it doesn't look like anyone's advancing right now. Let's let's push forward. All right, now we have some French allies joining us pretty soon. And they're down to 21. War support's zero. How are the Americans doing? War support's still 49. I think we'll be in good shape. Just need to finish this up before our national debt gets too bad. And actually, we have a lot of room to increase taxes if we have to. Let's, let's do one jump just to buy some more time. And hopefully I can just drop it back down after the war is over. Always keeping an eye on resources. Making sure I'm not missing opportunities. Um, let's see. These regions don't have enough people, so I'm not going to worry about building there right now. All right, now the French are starting to push through. We're almost there. They're almost ready to give up. And our bureaucracy is much higher now at 428. I think we need about 500 to do the skyscraper decision. So I'll definitely do that after we finish this war. Get a few government administrations building now so that's ready. And the French are pushing the Brits back. I think that should do it pretty quickly. They're just about out. So our gold depleted in the South Island, sadly. But we can build some mines there now. We're almost there. Almost. Minus one. There we go. Let's propose the peace deal. And that should do it. We now own the Scottish Lowlands. They're part of our market. We have their coal mines. There we go. That is huge. Let's just throw 20 levels on that to start. Need sugar, opium, dye. Let's just get our production methods um, aligned where they're different here. Got a lot of different ones. Um, I, th I think from the Scottish province we inherited. Yeah, they've got a lot of buildings there that are all different. Urban centers, all covered markets, all electric streetlights. 
Let's go free churches. Munition plants. Let's go shells. Um, small arms. We don't really need that many. So we'll leave that one for now. We need some extensive military shipbuilding. There we go. Chemical plants. These we can go right to the top. Um, let's go water tube for the tooling. Food industries. Um, let's see. Wow, what is so expensive here? Oil. We need oil for that. Then textiles. We can actually go to electric sewing machines, but we'll run out of dye and electricity is expensive. So I'm not going to do that yet. But I will go to elastics. Uh, that'll use some of our rubber industry and increase the amount of... Uh, luxury clothing we're getting out of it so decisions let's do the skyscraper site i think that's a an interesting one can help with our prestige as we're sitting at number five and i really want to pass russia look at that our gdp is higher than russia france france or prussia and we got a pretty decent population boost from joining or from taking over that part of the market so what's going on in Western Australia and why is our infrastructure so bad? I think we didn't have full employment on that port. Yep, so our uh, infrastructure rating is super low. Ulster, well, let's see what the problem is there. Ports employed. Um, railway? Railways employed. I don't know if I want to do this. Yeah, let's... No, I don't want to lose 25 inter infrastructure for it. Um, Gabon, we just don't have the people for it. Lowlands, we have the people for it. But no ports. So let's make sure we get ports built. Let's see what the problem is here. Yeah, railway is short on engines. And then no harm in expanding the port. Leanster, I'm guessing a similar story. We'll just expand that all. Yeah, same thing here. I wonder if it was just the expansion of industry while we were at war, kept building in the background, kind of lost track of what uh, our infrastructure looked like. And in Mauritania, we just need to hire. Uh, I think, yeah, once those ports get fully hired out, I think that should be plenty. Hmm, I kind of want to incorporate it. We'll see. Yeah, I'll incorporate it. It's only five years because it shares heritage. And that, that'll that help increase our, our tax revenue quite a bit, I would think. We're already getting a little tax revenue out of it, but having it incorporated will help. And then as these coal mines get built, we'll employ a lot of these 312,000 unemployed people. And let's see what else we've got. Make sure these are all standardized. Yeah, there we go. So now we should get a lot more coal out of the state. And that's super important. I wish we could have gotten it earlier in the game. We just got more migrations, up to 23 million people. That is insane for Ireland. So what's the next move? I, mean, I do want to destroy the British Empire. That's, I think that's a very um, roleplay friendly Irish goal. Let's go with proportional taxation. I think that fits our playthrough. Um, I think with as strong as some of the radical and the labor union movements are in our country, that would be uh, 
pretty reasonable to do. We can declare a new interest here. And let's see, defensive pact with Brazil. Yeah, that'll get interesting. Hmm, I don't know where I want to be. I think it's always good to have more interest in Africa. There's a ton of resources there. So if you can colonize a bit, always good to do. And now our balance is back positive. We did uh, tick up our taxes one. So I think we're on the middle setting now. I'd like to bring those back down, but not with our debt as high as it is. So what are input goods shortages? It looks like we have quite a few, just engines, but it looks like it's affecting a lot of them. So I'm gonna expand our motor industries. Um, actually, Ulster looks like it's short on people, so I'll start building another one in Munster. And steel just looks like it's short all around. You can never have too many tools. And we want to get some people employed in the lowlands. Rubber, small arms, and tools are expensive. Interesting. I thought we would have had plenty of rubber. Because we don't have any industries really using it. I guess we do have... Uh, our clothing industry using rubber now with the elastic. Our population keeps growing. Let's see what's next. So the British liberal revolt, which I'm guessing is the regime change we saw coming from the US. Strange illness. All right, so we've got um, more taxation here with proportional taxation. I'll take the bureaucracy penalty to get rid of that. Um, now we can back down taxes, which is great. Should help the standard of living increase again. And hopefully, yeah, see the GDP go right up. says unhealthy economy oh because our we've used a lot of credit oh well all right now we have our trench warfare i don't know if i want to keep going navy here let's see what else we have malaria prevention is good because we have some colonies and malaria areas and i want those to grow a little quicker so i'll start researching that one Let's get the army switched over to the new um, troop types with our trench infantry. Just so that we have, uh, actually let's set the regular army to bicycle and the other one to Cav Scout still. I wanna get the army moved over while we're at peace so they have time to work through that equipment change penalty. So haven't used um, auto expand much before. Definitely worth it. I, I think I was just way behind the eight ball on that one. Anglo Canadian. I didn't realize that Anglo Canadian was its own um, culture type. I figured it would just be Canadian. I do have some unemployed. I'm not too worried about it. Our steel mills expanding here. Our resources are just about maxed out. But not in um, the lowlands. There's plenty of room to grow here. It's curious, it's the number three steel mill. And it's at one. So looking at this, there's not a ton of places for us to expand. 
Um, let's see, could it could do Western New Guinea, Western Micronesia. I'll take Western New Guinea. Like, who would I even go to war with right now? I guess the the easy answer is to keep pushing on the Brits. I don't know if that's what I want to do, though. Be, we'll be cautious with the rush, rubber again. There we go. We could use some more bureaucracy. Ban the government administration. And it's a good use of pops, too. We've got unemployed people. Give them government jobs. Keep them busy. Could actually use some more logging. Let's see where I can build logging camps. Um, some of these smaller colonies have a. I can build a couple, so I'll just build those. Get the people employed. We should hopefully see some of these government buildings starting to get built again. I know the 1.2 patch, um, the devs have started talking about a little bit, so I want to try to get through this game and finish it up before 1.2 hits. Um, because I'm sure it'll mess up the save to stick with the same game going from 1.1 to 1.2. Big feature they're talking about is automated building from the investment pool. Um, I kind of liked how that worked in the first, Vic or not in the first Victoria, um, in Victoria 2. Uh, because it really simulated, especially depending on your economy type, if you're playing as, you know, the, the US or one of the more free market economies where um, your capitalists would just build their own buildings with whatever was needed and profitable at the time. So I think that can help, especially when you're these big countries where, it, you know, it's it's kind of too much to manage just on its own. Um, but I think there's a, a risk there that it also makes every country just the same. Every country has the same capitalists fo following the same generic strategies. Uh, and, and that's not, I don't think anyone really wants to see that. So I'm curious to see how they get that developed uh, and make a an interesting feature out of it. Man, you, you never really can have too many tooling factories. Just no matter where you are in the game, you're burning through tools. This railway is not very profitable, um, so I'll shift it over to passengers a little bit and then expand it to try to make up for that difference. And never quite understood how trade centers employ people. Um, wow, that's a lot of people. Oh, I guess it's just all the different ethnicities because we have so many people migrating into the country. It's losing money. I don't know how that really works, but we'll see. The Western Australia is having trouble and the challenge there is there just aren't enough people. But if we make that an industrial port, maybe that will help get the infrastructure we need. Doesn't quite look like it. Ulster. What's going on in Ulster? That is way behind on infrastructure. I, I need modern ports. That's what I need there. And railways. I don't know what to even do about that. That big of a gap in infrastructure. Some of these other ones are only a couple percent off. I'm not too worried about it. South Island, we just need more people. I'm guessing something similar with Leanster. All right, so we have film unlocked. Let's lay the foundations. The Brits declared us a rival. I'll take it. We can fight about it later.
Why would they declare us a rival? We just beat them in a war not that long ago. And I wonder how our uh, military is looking here. Let's check their bonuses. All right, they're... Um, yeah, they've recovered from the equipment changeover bonuses. Or penalties, I guess. So we can switch over our glassworks to plastic houseware. Where's that one? But we need the... We need oil to make that happen. And I don't think I have any more oil producing options. Whaling stations can produce oil. So I guess I'll just max those out. Where I can. So I guess I'll look at the resources to decide where to go next. Highlands don't have much that I want. Trade agreement with the US? Yes. Now Yorkshire on the other hand, coal and iron for days. Same with Lancashire and some oil rigs. Um, I think, I think the price for them declaring me their rival is Lancashire. Can I take that? Maybe because it's not a, uh, a core or something. Yeah, so maybe I'll take um, British North Islands. Kenya could be interesting. Salibs? In my last playthrough, oh, I forget who I was playing as. I think I was Sweden. Um, and I, I conquered Salibs and ended up with just a huge population there and a lot of, I think, oil and rubber. Um, that was a extremely important colony for me so i think i'll take the highlands and then i will see what what else i can add as a war goal i'm not afraid of what they can throw at me they're weaker now because they lost um <clears throat> they lost the lowlands uh it's not too big militarily for them they only had a few barracks there but it's still a smaller economy, still a few um, barracks that flipped from them to me. And then also a lot of conscripts because um, it does have a decent population. And just looking for any spots that have a lot of peasants who I can train into soldiers. So the diplomatic maneuvers phase hasn't started yet. Let's add a war goal. Liberate New South Wales. Um, Scandinavia declared us their rival. What? Let's see. Anything in Australia that I want? My Australian geography is not great, so I'm not sure which... I want... Um, I think I want... Victoria, maybe? Let's see. Actually, let's liberate New South Wales. That's, that's the other thing I want. We're just about to enter the sway phase. You can get the US, Russia, and Brazil. Um, Brazil is going to be my third round pick just because they're the smallest. But I think I'm going to go for the US first. Russia has a better navy. 
and they're closer. So I think that that actually makes more sense then. All right, so we're hopefully getting the Russians on our side. Let's check how our generals look. All looks good there. All right, the Russians are on our side. Now the Americans don't want to be on our side. And we'll get the British Raj to pay Brazil war reparations, which seems a little unlikely, but I'll take it. Oh, we got the Alaska Ontario front. Yep, Brazil's on my side now. So I think it's about time we start to mobilize. And any conscripts? I'll take a trade agreement with um, Austria. Primarily, I think, because it'll make them less likely to side with my enemies. So let's see. I've got a lot of guys there on this, uh, the southern front. So I think I'll push north first. Um, try to wipe that out and then turn south. Overly enthusiastic partisans. I'm going to try to slow down the Labor Party. Uh, I might try to get the conservatives back in the line to push for uh, free trade. I think that's my next move. I don't have too much of a strategy with what I'm building right now. Uh, I'm just kind of throwing stuff out there where I have uh, enough peasants to staff factories. The Brits backed down. They just gave me the highlands. Wow. That's embarrassing. So the standard of living is struggling in the Scottish highlands. And, you know, I wonder if this is a... I've heard some people talking about the British port bug. And I wonder if this is one of the cases. Um, because there were no ports in the provinces that I captured. So that makes it a little less fun. Uh, you know, you want to feel like you beat the, the Brits at their best. So I think once we get this port built, that'll help with the infrastructure in the Scottish Highlands. Um, so let's reform this. Do I want the army in? Let's well, actually... Hmm. Yeah, I think this is the one that's going to be most likely to give me free trade. It's kind of nice we didn't have to go to war for that. Saves a lot of money. So we can build a skyscraper. Let's throw it in Leanster. Cool to have. Um... Where was I right before this? I got distracted by skyscrapers. It's talking about ports. That's a lot of turmoil there. But it'll improve as as we develop the market, um, get some people employed. Really good fishing market. There we go. How do we have so few peasants? Is there just no one living here? 194,000? Well, I guess when the standard of living is that bad, people are going to leave. And now we can declare more interests. What should we declare interesting? I think Ireland always wanted a home in the Caribbean. It was destined. Manifest destiny. We need more dye. Um, how are you guys so... Oh, it's because you don't have hops. Oh, 
So now what's up with New South Wales? They're, they are a puppet. I thought we... Oh, that's right. I was going to force them to liberate, but... I feel like there was something else I chose instead. Now I can't remember my war goals. We need sugar. We need dye. I think rather than automating the building pool, I might honestly want to see uh, trade automated first. Because it, it made sense in the uh, in Victoria 2 that your, your people would just go out on the market and buy what they needed rather than having to manually decide what you're going to import from where. And trade agreements could still be important. Um, you know, make maybe make it easier, give you priority for trade from certain markets. But I don't think I should have to manually decide to import sugar. What are my other opportunities to import or export? Deal. I've got a lot of convoys now that I've built up so many ports. Always tools. Engines. Seems like no one ever really has too many engines to export. Then what can I export? Really basic stuff. Fabric. Meat. Because of all my livestock ranches. Should I attack Belgium? Let's see. They have a defensive pact with France, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna risk that one. Liberia, Venezuela. They're a, hmm. Netherlands and Venezuela in a customs union. That is interesting. Now Spain. How about Spain? I I could take some Spanish stuff. They have a defensive pact with Lan Fang. So I don't have any opportunities for diplomatic plays. They want an alliance. Actually, I'll take it. How about New Granada? Anything interesting there I could take? I could conquer Haiti. 1.5 million people. Let's see what the uh, resources look like. They've got rubber, tobacco. Lots of rubber. Yeah, it's, that actually looks... Looks like the kind of thing I would need. Alright, so we got malaria prevention, which is big. Um, for our colonization efforts. Modern financial instruments could be important. But I think I want to go destroyers. Uh, building up our navy is going to be important if we want to take Haiti. Um, just because there's a chance that some other European powers might not be happy about it. Um... And then we'll we'll have to find a way to uh, break through that blockade and get to Haiti. I think we've got our skyscraper building 21 weeks. I can reduce taxes again now because um, we're just swimming on mo in money. Yeah, let's we're not slowing down production. I understand it sucks, but... So we should see this easier to uh, colonize now that our um, malaria penalties are removed. And where else? In Africa, too. But I wonder if we just kind of ran out of a... Uh... How did they... Hmm. We'll 
I'll take it. Um, how did they become independent from me? Oh. I guess they are still a um, unrecognized power. It gets confusing looking at that sometimes. Not always super clear. So which states have the largest GDP? Our original four, then the Lowlands, and South Cameroon. Who's next? Where is South Cameroon? 15.7 million, 2 million people. Tea and coffee is what we're growing there. And 82,000 unemployed people. So let's, let's get some rubber plantations, logging camps going. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not interested in converting. All right, so we constructed a skyscraper, got some prestige out of it, and we're up to number two. Some visitors from the colonies. Yeah, I'm not gonna approve that. I'm not gonna risk the growth of my colonies. I'm just gonna colonize everything I can right now. And I always forget to um, improve my institutions. Let's, let's improve social security, get that standard of living up. I think that also helps with migration attraction, though I could be remembering Victoria too here. We don't have any possible diplomatic plays targeting the Brits right now. I'm going to withdraw. I don't want to harm my relations with the U.S. They've been on my side in too many wars. Any interesting laws here? Wage subsidies? What do I get out of it? More welfare payments. More social security. I could do public health insurance. And reduce mortality. Just go all the way. See how many people I can possibly get. The thing I don't get is it's minus 95% from severe malaria. But I did... Um, research the, all of the texts for handling malaria. How's Mauritania look? Not great. I need more people. I have no actual economy there. Just a bunch of ports. So let's actually back the ports down. Still not even close. I don't know what to do with all my money. I'm on the lowest taxes. I'm paying my government people a lot. Yeah, let's increase the chance of success there. Let's just throw everything on auto expand. No reason not to. The rogue imperialist. I've got to reject this guy. I also need France on my side. Although maybe I don't. I can build a ridiculously large military. Not so much elsewhere, but on the home island. Do you need a navy? Yeah, let's free up some bureaucracy. We've got it. How is this army looking? I'll recruit another general. Um, Some good stats here. Pillager. Not really what I want. Um, But let's get this guy. Fitzgerald.
and then just making sure that my other regions have a general All right, this guy we need to promote him because we have um more uh battalions getting built than we actually had room for then how does my navy even look it's got just 21 flotillas trade agreement with italy yeah that'll that'll help um just free up some bureaucracy get some more trade going all good stuff there I think the challenge with a navy is that it takes time to build up. You can't just build it right away and doesn't train as quickly as your army does. More declared interests. So let's declare some interests. Do I want to keep destroying the Brits? Well, yeah. But is that my main priority? I'm not sure. All right, we've got public health insurance. Very cool. Maybe Spain. Spain would be interesting. I, I could, I could see myself owning part of Spain. So let's take a look at Haiti. Um. I conquer this yeah I don't think these other countries will jump in on Haiti's side do have a mission to abolish slavery I can I can go for that one Spain's gonna be on our side and then we'll also conquer Haiti um I'm not going to use any diplomatic maneuvers here to try to get Prussia on our side unless I have to. Unless we see like uh, one of the other major countries jump in on Haiti's side. Continent of Opportunity. I could pay for it. I'll send it. And France has sided with Haiti, so I will call in the Prussians. And hopefully they can handle things on the continent for me, and I will be able to handle Haiti. I think before we get too deep into this, that's a good place to call it for this episode. Thanks again for watching. If you made it this far, you're enjoying the series, uh, please go ahead and subscribe. Let me know anything you uh, want to see in the comments. Thanks again for watching, and have a good one.